you back uh, and on your yeah it'd be great it's obviously uh, what he brings to our club um, plays in all situations uh, you know play goes through him a ton has the puck a ton makes a ton of plays um, tremendous awareness in a hockey sense so uh, obviously enjoyed playing them since I've been here um, be great to get back with them today He's usually pretty energetic at the best of times. What have you been your kind of sense of him as he's gone through this injury layoff that I'm sure has been longer than he would have wanted? He's been great, I think. You know, he's he's been around a little bit now. So, um, you know, unfortunately uh, it happens at times. And, and uh, whether it's been in the past or his experience now, I think uh, just doing what he needs to do to get himself ready uh, as he can be. But certainly he thrives being around the group and, and uh, just going about our daily business and how we prepare and, and you know what it what it takes and, and what it is to play in the league and, and be a part of the team, especially a uh, um, big part of our leadership course. So uh, you can just sense um, the excitement and, and just how he thrives off of uh, being around the group. What are your thoughts on spreading the offense of weapons across three lines as opposed to loading up two? I think we have a, a really good hockey team with guys throughout our lineup that can score. Obviously, uh, coaching staff is going to do what they feel is best. Um, put ourselves in, in position to have success and, and to win. So um, I think we all take a lot of pride in whoever we play with to go out there and be effective, carry play, create opportunities. And, and obviously, uh, we have the ability to score the players that have the ability to score. So, um, you know, for us, it, it's, uh, um, you know, show up and, and play to our standard and our team identity and, and uh, a lot of belief and trust in one another. Simon Benoit signed a new contract a couple of days ago. How would you describe his impact at the Blue Line? I think he's been phenomenal. Uh, obviously, a uh, big guy, physical presence, and, and very long, and, and um, you know makes it difficult to play against, especially in your own end. So, I, I think it's it's all that, but it's it's how he gets he he gets that out of himself, and, and how he's worked since uh, he's come here, uh, the type of mindset, and even maybe when things haven't gone his way, just how he's kind of continued to stay with it. Uh, and believe in himself and, and push himself uh, to make an impact every time he gets an opportunity. So we're really thrilled for him, and, and he's really become a strong part of our group here. Uh, <clears throat> how good are these kind of uh, story, like Benoit's story, on a team like, like your team, John? Well, teams that have success have, have many, um, many contributions throughout the lineup, and, and it's not always maybe your top guys or, or guys that get a lot of, uh, a lot of the attention. It's players like Benny um, and different guys that uh, continuously to step up in different areas that uh, you need throughout 60 minutes uh, in a game throughout a long season playoff time uh, that just you know become very difficult to play against and are just very effective and efficient and in, in how uh, how you play and whether that's defending uh, getting the puck out of your own end um, you know things of that nature that obviously lead to lead to success so he, he's a big part of that. How high would you put Austin's name in it when it comes to the heart conversation and the Selkie conversation this year? Uh, he should be right there. He should be, you know, to me, he's uh, right in the mix and, and uh, should be nominated for both. I think uh, type of season he's having, you know, what he uh, can potentially do here from a goal scoring standpoint and, and to be able to do that and, and just to be as well rounded as he is, it's just even more impressive. You know, he's not just a a trigger guy or always just put in offensive situations. He plays in all areas of the game. He, he carries play, uh, wins so many puck battles. Obviously, his takeaways are exceptional. Um, I don't think he always gets enough credit for just how smart he is and just the positions he puts himself in, especially how hard teams defend him and how he always consistently finds openings, open space, uh, um, and, and just the timing and all those sorts of things. So he's just as well-rounded as a player as you're going to find in, in our game today. So. Um, It'd be great to see him, uh, um, you know, get the recognition on, on, on both those fronts. Do you think 70 goals, like he's chasing it, like it's realistic. Do you think something like that would be possible with, in today's game? Uh, I, I think it's hard to believe. I think uh, we're all probably still a little, uh, uh, you know, dumbfounded in a way, but also not surprised because when you're around him every day and what we saw a couple of years ago, um, even even in the, in the short season, the pace he was on was remarkable. Um, you know, and, and you know, before we, we had the bubble, you know, he was on a great pace that year too. And it was, it was right on, was uh, very close to getting the 50 at that point. And there was still, you know, I think 10 plus games left to play. So, you know, he's been on uh, a remarkable pace. And I think, uh, 
you know, sky's the limit for him. I think you don't you don't set any any boundaries or barriers for him. He continuously just goes out there and gets better and, and makes an impact every night. And obviously his ability to finish and do it in different ways and impact the game with and without the puck. Um, as complete a player he is, it's 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 unbelievable. So. But yeah, 70 is a big number, and, and it's hard to fathom. Um, but uh, we're obviously in a real, real special place in the game right now, I think, and, and the type of players uh, they're at the top of the league um, and what they're doing and, and some of the numbers that they're reaching is uh, is unbelievable, and he, he's certainly a big part of that. John, you just recently passed Marty St. Louis for uh, 83rd on the all-time NHL points list. Is there anything in particular you remember about playing against him? Yeah, I do. I mean, obviously... Um, you know, Marty wasn't the biggest guy, but uh, just an ultimate com competitor, I think. Uh, you know, he raised his game um, to whatever kind of the game called for. Uh, I think uh, competed extremely hard and uh, was just a, an elite, elite passer. Uh, you know, he won the, I think he won the, the Art Ross or the Hart Trophy, maybe both, you know, you know, later in his career, which is uh, uh, really significant. So obviously Marty is a, is a hell of a player and, and uh, built a tremendous uh, legacy and, and resume. So obviously fortunate to have played against them, played with them at the Olympics and, and um, you know, it, uh, um, you know, crazy to think that, uh, crazy to think that on my end. So, um, but yeah, a lot of respect for him and, and what he's accomplished. So Sheldon was saying he hasn't seen a dip from, from your line since you've been up there with Austin. What have you liked about how it's kind of developed the chemistry with you guys? Yeah, I think every day we're just trying to get better and um, individually and as a group. Um, obviously, Austin's a great player and he has a lot of strengths, but there are certain things you got to play towards with his shooting ability and, and, and whatnot and ability to score goals. So he's always in the right spot and getting him the puck where he wants it is, is a key to that. And uh, no, we're just we're rolling right now. Just got to keep it going. And um, Bert's been a big part of that as well. What advantages do you see of spreading the offensive weapons across three lines here? I think that's what, that's what it takes to win. Um, obviously, uh, we're a couple weeks away. Um, last night was the night that we clinched the uh, playoff spot, so good feeling. And um, the last, whatever it is, seven games, I think we have left. Is that, is that seven? So use that to get ready to go, knowing that we're going to be there and clean up some things, work on some details. And when it comes to, to playoff hockey, you need everyone, uh, not just three lines, you need four lines and you need six defensemen, you need two goalies and you need some extras as well that are gonna jump in. So um, <clears throat> I think we're just gearing towards that and looking forward to the challenge. Knowing that you are in, does that change anything at all? Like, uh, is this, like, is there more ease or is there like kind no. of more time to kind of work on things or anything like that between now and the end? No, it doesn't change anything. We'll be ready to go though. You've been on the other side too when you're mathematically eliminated. How difficult is that to find motivation coming to the rink when playoffs aren't in, aren't going to be an option anymore? Yeah, it's it's tough because I think that's how we all play, right? Is to win a Stanley Cup, and when you, you use that opportunity early on, you have a long summer. It's uh, it's not fun, but um, I guess the the good part is um, for for a team that's out of it is is you try and play. Um, the role of, of, of hurting other teams' chances or, or beating teams that are going to have a chance to win a Stanley Cup just to build your own confidence as a group. And um, we're going to expect the best from Montreal tonight. That's a really good group over there, a lot of young talent, well coached, and um, got it ready to go. A couple of games ago, I think you had a the breakaway. It looked like it peaked over your shoulder just to kind of see where Austin was. Is it, is it possible to look for him too much right now? Nope. How do you, do you balance it at all? We know you love the playmaking side of it, but do you have to remind yourself that sometimes you do have to shoot or no? Nope. <laughs> no, he's trying to get 70 goals, but of course there's the right time to shoot, uh, shoot the puck, and um, we're all aware of that. But uh, no, it's what he's done this year is spectacular, and he's not done yet. He's hungry as ever, and uh, he's trying to help him out. Do you think it was possible 70 goals? It seems like crazy to think, but like he's right there. Like You knew he was good. Did you know 70 goals good? Yeah, uh, I mean, you look at him in practice and you look at him in the summer skates, it's not hard to figure out that this guy's the most talented player on the planet. So, um, such a big body, such a great shot, uh, unbelievable human being, very, very humble, works hard. Not, I couldn't say enough good things about him. He's, he's, he's an awesome dude and he's, uh, he's been driving the ship all year for us and um, we're very lucky to have him and he's a big part of the group. So, um, yeah, you just got to keep building and helping him out whenever we can. I appreciate about how Simon Benoit goes about his business. Uh, Benny's a great teammate. Obviously, he works hard, keeps it simple on the ice, and uh, yeah, no, he's been uh, happy for him to get a contract extension there. It's you're always excited for for teammates that that get rewarded for for playing well, and um, he's awesome.
What do you think allowed the group to keep having success without Mitch in the lineup? Mitch, he's such a talented uh, player that's such a big part of this group and has been for a long, long time. And um, when you lose a guy like that for an extended period of time, it's, it's tough on the group, uh, on and off the ice, right? I mean, we, we all miss him, obviously, and love having him around. Um, so guys have to step up, and you know, no one's going to fulfill Mitch Marner's shoes, obviously. So it's a collaborative effort, and I think everyone did a really good job of, of just bridging that gap and until he's back, and now we're super excited to have him back. We know you love it here uh, in Montreal, the fans, the I atmosphere. Do, yeah. what, was it, what was it like when you were on the other side of it a couple of weeks ago when you guys were in here? Did you appreciate it in a different way? No, nah, man. I mean, I, it's, I've been here quite a few few times since I got traded, and it's it's there's nothing better than the Bell Center on a Saturday night. It's awesome. And, uh, I mean, the fan base here is incredible. Um, I'm super lucky to play at home now and in front of the, for the jersey that I – grew up idolizing my entire life, um, but Montreal was special in a different way. Um, there's so much history here. The the alumni buzzing around every game is, is pretty spectacular, and you get to integrate with those guys, but wearing that jersey is special, and uh, I certainly enjoyed my time. I've said that since I left here. Um, I loved every second of it and wished them the best. What is it, What is this game playing at the Bell Center mean to you? Yeah, it's always pretty special to play here. You know, I grew up here, so it's always exciting. How many uh, friends, family will you have tonight? A couple. I'm sure some people are coming and haven't told me, so uh, I have a couple. So <laughs> it's exciting. What stands out about the atmosphere here? You know, Leafs, Habs, Saturday night, what it could be? I had always that little uh, rivalry, you know, uh, it's been going on for years. Uh, it's exciting games. The fans always go crazy, so it's always a loud game and it's fun. It's just fun to play here. How have you felt about your game since you came back into the lineup? It feels like you've been really steady. No, well, you know, I, I just tried to. Uh, be as constant as I can, just uh, do what I can to prove that I should stay in the lineup, and from there it's up to the coaching staff to decide. Yeah, what do you what do you hope to show? What do you want to show to, to show that you belong in that game one playoff lineup? Yeah, like you said, like I want to show that I I should be in that first game, and uh, and I want them to want me in that first game. So uh, no, I just I just keep playing the way I am and uh, being hard to uh, to play against. Nothing else I can do, right? Some of your, your memories growing up here. Did you come to games here at all as a kid, or what jumps out about growing up in Quebec? I mean, when you grew up in Montreal, for sure you come to games. Or you yeah. watch the games uh, on Saturday nights. Uh, you know, the thing that uh, always stuck in my mind was the uh, accueillant, no Canadian. You know, so uh, that was always a, a fun, uh, a fun uh, thing to to hear. And when you're on the ice and you hear it, it's always special. Aurais-tu pensé vivre la rivalité Toronto-Montréal un samedi soir euh, en tant qu'ennemi, qu si on veut, un jour? Oui. Maintenant, je suis rendu content d'être l'ennemi de Montréal. Oui, ça. Je suis content d'être à Toronto. Écoute, alors, je me ferai bien traiter ici. Uh, puis euh, je suis content de, de jouer, c'est sûr. Et tu me parles un peu de la, la saison morte l'année passée. Là, je recule dans le temps un peu. Mais euh, est-ce que tu étais déçu de, de quitter les Docks initialement? Ça a-tu été comme une période tough pour toi, ce, ce, ces mois-là? Comment... Uh, c'est sûr que c'est jamais fun de passer l'été sans contrat. Ah, ça a pris du temps avant que euh, le chien. Mais je pense que dans la vie, rien n'arrive pour, pour aucune raison. Fait que, euh, il est arrivé qu'il s'est arrivé, puis en ce moment, bien, je suis content de rester ici pour les trois prochaines années. C'est quoi euh, avec la belle histoire de persévérance dans, un, dans une formation, dans un vestiaire où euh, il y a presque juste des joueurs vedettes? Comment tu te sens là-dedans? Puis comment tu sens que les autres te regardent? <coughs> non, mais si je peux être une inspiration pour des jeunes tu sais, qui, qui pensent que leur rêve est, est fini, parce qu'ils ont été coupés d'une certain, un certaine catégorie ou quelque chose, mais tu sais, je, je suis la preuve que si tu n'arrêtes pas de travailler sur ton rêve, mais tout est possible, tu sais. Je n'ai jamais eu le chemin facile. J'ai toujours passé par la porte en arrière, puis je me suis rendu où ce que je suis aujourd'hui, puis euh, des fois, je pense que le monde n'en parle pas assez. C'est-tu tough de ne pas se décourager quand on est dans le chemin? Parce que le, la finalité, c'est ton contrat de trois ans qu'on voit, là, mais toi, tu as fait le chemin. Oui. Parle-moi un petit peu de ça. C'est sûr que, tu sais, il euh, y a des moments d'adversité. Pas, je, te dirais, je te mentirais, je te dirais, tout est rose, non. tout est beau. Euh, mais j'ai jamais cessé de croire en moi. Tu sais, mes parents m'ont toujours supporté, ma blonde m'a toujours supporté là-dedans. Euh, tu sais, pour moi, j'ai été bien encadré, puis j'ai jamais abandonné. J'ai toujours dit, bon, mais on retrouve ses manches, puis on continue. Puis je pense que ça, le fait de moi, le joueur que je suis en ce moment, tu sais, je suis un joueur très. Tu sais, je me donne tout le temps 120% sur la glace. Mm -hmm. Je suis jamais facile à jouer contre, je prends jamais aucun moment pour acquis. Puis je pense que ça fait partie de ma personnalité, puis c'est cet acharnement-là au cours de toutes ces années-là, le fait que je suis joueur que je suis aujourd'hui. Ça revient à rien qui arrive pour... Euh, tout, monde arrive, tout arrive pour une raison. Après quelques contrats d'un an comme ça, de, de finalement 
être signé pour trois ans et d'avoir un peu de stabilité, qu'est-ce que ça signifie pour toi, qu'est-ce que ça représente? Non, c'est sûr que c'est le fun. T'sais, quand tu te bats chaque année, sachant quoi, que tu sens l'année prochaine, c'est, 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 c'est un stress de plus tes épaules. Je suis très heureux que Toronto m'ont, euh, m'ont fait confiance. Puis ils veulent que je fasse partie de leur organisation pour les trois prochaines années. Puis pour moi, je vais tout donner pour euh, les up to their expectations. Euh, puis euh, essayer d'être, de, d'amener une coupe à la maison. Euh, tu en as parlé un petit peu en anglais, mais pour toi, jusqu'à quel point ce serait vraiment euh, un accomplissement d'arriver et d'avoir convaincu Sheldon Keefe et la direction du club que tu peux jouer le premier match des séries? Je suis parti, je dis, j'ai, j'ai commencé dans la américaine cette année. Fait pour moi, euh, travailler et aller euh, chercher leur confiance, c'est tout. C'est sûr que c'est, c'est, c'est gratifiant. Mais une fois que je lis cette game-là, il faut que je joue du bon hockey. Mm-hmm. Ça, une fois que tu as atteint leur confiance, tu ne peux pas juste t'asseoir sur tes lauriers. Il faut que tu continues à travailler, il faut que tu continues à prouver que tu as ta place. Puis je veux gagner. Donc, je suis là, je suis joué au hockey pour gagner. Ce n'est pas juste une question d'aller à leur confiance. J'ai des expectations de moi aussi. Mm-hmm. Puis, comme je te dis, moi, c'est, c'est, je vais gagner, puis je vais tout faire pour moi. Tu vas quand même te sentir plus léger avec ce contrôle en poche depuis que tu es plus sérieux. C'est différent. Je sais pas, un poids de moins sur tes épaules. Quand tu joues, tu sens-tu que. Pas, <rire> oui, puis non, tu sais, je veux dire. Ça revient encore, je veux gagner. Que je veux signer ou pas signer, je veux dire, moi, j'ai ma job à faire à soi. Euh, tu sais, je, je, je veux performer, je veux aider l'équipe. Puis, c'est, c'est juste sur ça que je focus. Merci beaucoup. Merci, bon match. Sheldon, I know you said you talked to all your guys about this new kind of uh, line formation you're going forward with here. What was your message to William, and what are you looking for him from him in this in this spot? Just looking for William to keep being William. I mean, he's he's uh, whatever line he's played on, he's he's uh, he's been a driver on it. He's having a terrific season. He makes our group better when he's playing at his best, no matter where he's playing. Uh, so that's really it, um, you know. And the reality is, I mean, we can talk about it: first line, second line, third line. The way I would like it to be is, is that each each game uh, it could be different. You know, uh, Williams' line could uh, could be the first line tonight. You know, I mean, it's you know, I think when you've got the talent spread out like that. It, it's more of a question of who's going on that particular night, and on great nights, all of them would be going. But. Um, Yeah, I think that's the idea is that you've got to spread out and, and uh, you know, get opportunities for, for different lines to go. Our fourth line with uh, Kampf and and, uh, and uh, Revo and, and Dewar, like those guys to me the other night maybe have been our best line on that particular night. So uh, that's really what you're looking for is to get uh, all your groups thriving. And, you know, whether it's William on that line or whether it's Mitch uh, with John or or Austin, the way he's done with uh, with Max and Bert. I expect those guys to drive it and, and be leaders on, uh, on each of those uh, groups. John? John was just saying that Austin should be a finalist for the Hart and the Selkie. Where do you see him league-wide in those conversations? I, I mean, I, we, we all get to watch Austin every single day, so uh, we're, we're often in awe with his ability to, to score and produce at such a high level, but he does so many other great things off the puck uh, to defend quickly and get us back on offense uh, that drive our team. So uh, certainly, uh, rec- you know, that, that deserves recognition as far as the league-wide stuff. I mean, I I don't care, frankly. Like, I just don't. Like, uh, it's a, you can debate it. There's so many great players around the league. Um, that deserve the same recognition or uh, or more if you want to debate it. I, I don't know. I don't quite care. I just know we have a great player that drives our team. And I think now more uh, more than ever with with having clinched a playoff spot and being able to narrow our focus even more on preparing for the playoffs, you know, we just we, you know, want Austin to continue to drive on our team to, to be ready for that. How much Going did back you to when you took the job, like where do you think Austin's – Uh, commitment to playing an all-around game. Where do you think that was when you first took the job, and where do you think it went since then? And you know what was that process? Like? Well, I think I, I don't know if I commitment is necessarily the right word. Austin's a young guy, you know, still learning the league. When I took over, um, when I took over and, and, and began coaching uh, here in Toronto. Um, He was the youngest player on our team at that time, and uh, you know, 
you forget that often because he was such a dominant player. Uh, but he was still f- sorting things out, figuring things out. I think we're, what's changed the most is is Austin has really um, has really come to value uh, and recognize how important uh, being great in all areas of the game is. And that was my message to him when I, you know, after a month or so of getting to know him and coaching him, my message to him was that you know, being truly great is to me is about impacting the game in more way more ways than just scoring goals uh, Austin right now is the greatest goal scorer in the league um, you know you're, the pace is less than one goal a game you're going to get 20 some shifts per game how are, you, how are you impacting the game in those areas that's what really being great is and that's what can drive our team to be great and uh, I, I think he, he really has bought into that and uh, you know as he's gotten older more experienced uh, you know he's, he's shown great passion for winning puck battles and uh, defending hard and, and uh, limiting time spent in the defensive zone and valuing the puck and all these kind of things that uh, make up a complete game and that's really what I'm focused on and whether he gets recognition league wide or whatever that doesn't matter to me and I don't think it matters to him and he just you know for those that are watching every single day you want to you want to appreciate it and and uh, we certainly do um, and he's a big reason why we're going back to the playoffs again. As you guys start to get defense back down the stretch these next seven games, how important is that to kind of see what you have for maybe what you want to do defensively come game one? Well, I think we already have a pretty good sense of what we want to do. You know, just like on forward, we have a pretty good sense of what we want to do. You know, there are seven games that remain to be played, and things may change. You know, injuries being what they are, it's been it's been hard to really settle in on anything because we've we've been missing you know a lot of guys and very important guys. You know, where if, you know, for instance, when you take Mitch out of the mix, it, it uh, not only is just mix up one line, but now it changes the whole dynamic of your team, and you have to really. Re- rejig the whole group uh, to, in order to compensate that for that because as much as you're trying to get an eye towards the playoffs you know you're still trying to get your game in order and you need to win the game and you want to build positivity and um, you know you you you, you want to manage that and I think we've done that really well with the adjustments that we have made and and through that you know you you, you uh, now you have Domi and, and uh, Matthews and Bertuzzi that have have that you found um, so I think that that's really what it's about is just you know living each day as we have it here. Um, like I said, we're trying to work towards what we think you know could work for us in the playoffs, but we're also adjusting to what's here and um, who's available, and then uh, recognizing that you know we've we've got a number of guys who are comfortable playing in different situations. We've dealt with injuries all season. We've dealt with guys struggling at different times and we've had to adapt and adjust to and the players have done well. Uh, you know, anytime we've reshuffled the group because of injury or what have you, it seems like it's made our group stronger. So to that end, I don't think we have to be uh, too rigid or stuck on, on anything, but uh, you know, we like the group we have here today and, and we want to really see how that can grow here over the next couple of weeks. Small Benoit just signed a, a new contract of course. Uh, what does he bring to, to your team and, and to your defense? Well, in terms of his play, uh, the size that he brings, the physicality that he brings, uh, and then also the, his skating, he gives him the ability to close quickly. And, you know, when you have length and skating ability and physicality, you're closing fast and you're taking away time and space. So that's something that was very evident early on when he started really getting in a groove with us is that he could do that. He eliminates a lot of mistakes and a lot of time spent on our end because of how he closes. Um, so that's what we really like and value about his game and how he's really worked hard on trying to improve his game offensively with the puck. And he's never going to be a guy that's going to produce points or anything like that, but his ability to transport the puck out of our zone, get us out of trouble, get the puck into the forward's hands. And then the other part of it is he's just a tremendous person. He's got uh, such a great personality. He works extremely hard. He's very coachable. He wants to get better. Uh, so he's he's been a tremendous add to our group. Um, it was a tough start for him with having to go down to the minors and dealing with injuries and all those kind of things. But in terms of how he's dealt with it, uh, you couldn't ask for more. How good is it to have that kind of story 
in your own dressing room where there's a lot of star player having the story like Benoit's story. Yeah, it's a great question, a great point. I think it's it's terrific. The guys are rallying around it. I think, again, because of the personality uh, that he has, uh, the guys are, get that much more excited about it. We've had a number of those types of things. You look at Bobby McMahon and his story uh, this season, Ilya Samsonov, the way that his season's gone and that story. Um, you know, lots of great things, um, uh, you know, that are sort of under the surface uh, with our group, uh, perhaps from the outside, but internally they're really important and, and our guys really value them. Thank you. Thank you.